No one ever sees chaos coming ever. No, you can't see chaos coming. No, you can't. I mean, that's always my answer when people are like, "Why is it? Where is when is Vix going to go to thirty? When is going to go to 40? I just, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Nasdaq, S and P, Russell two thousand, all uh, below January lows at least as of yesterday. Don't shoot the messenger. By the way, thanks Tony. Last week somebody came at me after the show, and uh, you were there for me. You know, they were like, "Oh, that doesn't make sense." Like, dude, that's what it was Thursday night. Okay, this is when right. these together people just understand. You're welcome. Thanks, man. You got my back, man. I know that. Uh, Dow Jones is at a four. I just tell the truth. I just tell the truth. Yeah, you do. You do. We just had a jobs report for the 11th straight month. This thing has come in hotter than expected and uh, unemployment rate rose. I don't know if uh, that thing has fully been digested yet. I'm not exactly sure. Surprisingly, if that's the number one thing moving the market right now, because uh, obviously Silvergate came out and it's shutting down operations and liquidating. We talked a little bit about that last week, seemingly coming to fruition. That's kind of pushed Bitcoin uh, to lows. It was actually below 20K overnight, I believe. I'm not sure where it is right now. If it's Maybe it's back above. No, it's just under... The futures are just under 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. The man of the hour, though, um, or the woman of the hour, uh, SIVB, that thing was forced to raise capital. It creates pretty much some serious anxiety in the sector. REITs also got hammered yesterday, too. We got a chart on that a little bit where we can we can chat more. And uh, VIX uh, was above, uh, I think it was above 22 a little while ago, still, even after the jobs report. And VIX are 90. That's the first time we've seen that since Feb 22. Next slide. I want your thoughts. I want your opinions, man. I mean, uh, what what's up? What's going on? What do you guys think about all of this? This is nuts, right? I mean, it was really quiet for the most part until like, I don't think most people were paying attention to this until somewhere around like halfway through the session yesterday. It was kind of quiet. And I don't think most people really knew. But um, three three banks in the last month uh, have SIVB as, a, as an outperform and over three hundred dollars is price target. So, yeah, I, I would say nobody was looking at this. Hell no. I mean, you know, they they had to raise capital. It's it's, it's really wild. And it's for sale. It's for sale now. It's halted. Yeah, it's for sale. Yeah. 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 You could probably buy it, Jamal. I probably could. <laughs> Are they selling for a dollar? That's about all I can get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was I pulled up, uh, you know, KRE yesterday and looked at the names that are in it, as you can see right here. And most of them were down somewhere between five and 10 percent. Um, it was wild, man. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen something like this in a while. Is this like the beginning of something or is this going to be a blip on the radar? I, we really won't know. But at the end of the day, it seems as though the idea of what's going on with rates, right, is really kind of affecting this. I mean, the fact that that banks um borrow at short terms and lend at long terms is, is almost kind of like it's catching up in a way it's mm -hmm. almost i don't know if it's a situation of two years going to five percent started to break things I, i'm not sure i mean let, let's be fair you know we we're self-directed investors and we take our portfolios you know very seriously and we apply a lot of risk metrics to all the stuff we do on a really small scale, like, you know, diversification of product, diversification of strategy. Um, you know, we, we look at our correlation risk. We clearly know, you know, what our bond risk is and, you know, where, you know, where we're trading. I mean, we talk about this yield curve all day long and in, inversions and what's happening with short term rates and everything else. Don't you find it like, like, I find it this total to be gross incompetence more than anything else like this to me is just an embarrassment and it's just it's just gross incompetence of 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 smart but egotistical um and arrogant you know bankers nothing more like this is this is everything every single thing i've read this is completely avoidable yeah i mean yeah, I mean, you know, it's almost like uh, in a system that's designed for these banks to succeed, they're failing miserably in somehow, shape or form. When you think about it, okay, it's a, it's a, an actual layup arm. Like, there's nothing you have to do except make sure that you are collateralized and diversified. Like, there's nothing else to it. Mm-hmm. I know I'm simplifying it, but you, you it are because this was all about bond yields, Tom. This was I really understand, Tony, but it's still it's not you understand how it works. 
Okay, everything's about bond yields. So is everything you do. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like everything we do as a we're a brokerage firm, it's all about bond yields. Bond yields go to zero. We make a lot less money. I mean, everything. You know, I mean, you know how the business works. Like this is every business, they have there's there's they have a certain responsibility to their shareholders, okay, to understand that markets move. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm sorry, this is this is a case of another case of just pure incompetence. But it's not like it's not like it's not rocket science. So these are smart people who just are arrogant, egotistical, and incompetent. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but is it just SIVB? Do we wonder if it's if it's just SIVB or is it is it all of these are all these banks are gonna be in trouble based on the current yield situation? You know what I mean? That's really the question, right? Well, yes. I think for the most part most banks clean up with higher yields. That's you know, what I thought. <laughs> that's well, what I that's, thought. It's not a it's not a thought. I mean, you know, obviously banks have locked in there's there's definitely situations where they've locked in, you know, some lower yields, but that's the risk that they take. But there's also banks that, you know, they they, they float with, you know, I mean, it's not that hard. If you take in a dollar and you pay a return that's lower then you're getting on the money. There's not too much you have to do. Okay. <laughs> the only way you get hurt is if you leverage yourself or you don't have collateral to defend your loans. And I mean, I, to me, that is just, that's just on them. That's a business model. Yeah. And there might be more of the story coming out over the next coming days. I'm sure of it. Everybody's going to have something on this. Let's move ahead to the next slide. Okay. Speaking of yields, man, I mean, uh, they've done a real dance this week. Obviously, we touched 5% in two years uh, over the last two days, though. I mean, yesterday, that was also what was weird is that the market was down. Obviously, a lot of it had to do with with the banking stuff. But uh, I don't think we've seen many days where the market was down 1% and two-year yields were down like 3 or 4%, whatever it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened too often. And again, they're down today. What are you going to say, Tom? No, no, you're 100% right. We finally got a little bit of a reversal in that that trade. Yeah, it was, it was definitely weird. And we've seen Fed funds move all over the place. I mean, early in the week, uh, you know, the odds of a, a 50 basis point rate hike, well, I didn't even say early week, a couple of days ago, was greater than 60%. And now it's kind of pulled back now. So this thing is all over the place. Um, I got, I'm wondering, I got a theory for that at the end. Let's move ahead to the next slide. Another bank, which really didn't have anything to do with this other bank, had to do more with, with Silvergate, SBNY. Look at the vol in there, picked up big time. This thing was tanking crazy. And um, these two banks have been the bigger partners for crypto companies. So another <laughs> bank to worry about in the meantime, the Signature Bank. And it's and it's down another $15 today. I mean, this is a bank route. And you, Tom, you may say it's the smaller banks, it's the, the boutique banks or, or whatever, but it's got to be a weight on just about every bank. Yeah, JP Morgan was downsized a little bit yesterday, too. Not size, but it was down. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's again, let's not, th this is a, this is a completely different play here. This is a crypto, you know, basically a bigger crypto bank. And, you know, and and I understand people are scared, but um, I don't th I think their situation at Silvergate and SBNY are very different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Let's move ahead to the next. Boston, I mean, you know, on the one hand, it's interesting because we're there. We've been struggling to find names with IVRs above 30 and now there's a decent amount. Yes. Um, be careful in, in those things, though, guys. Uh, the great Tony Batista, is wheat going out of business? It's a good mm -hmm. question. I mean, we've seen wheat uh, move big time. I mean, obviously, this is a little bit related to to yields, too, right? Right? Seems like it. You would, I, I, and, and maybe carrying costs, you know, uh, storage costs. I mean, who knows? This is just on the year so far. So um, I'm sure a lot of you are I, I feel like ball's not really up in wheat, though. It's, it's really interesting. No, it's not. It's not. I, yeah, it was we just, have, we're short some puts in in we. I mean, I don't know how you can't be right now. We're short some puts. They're basically nothing. The grains were such a big story when the Ukraine first hit, and now it you know it doesn't matter anymore. The Ukraine hasn't changed. You know what I mean? Like I'm just again, just how like you know news brings opportunity. It doesn't bring direction. Is all I'm trying to say. 
I mean, they're killing some of that, but they're also they're also bumping up like silver's up big today. And um, what's gold doing? I don't know gold silver is up two percent. Gold is up one percent. Oh no, kidding! Will gold yep. back above eighteen fifty? Uh, eighteen fifty two. Okay. All right. All right. What'd you say? Uh, Sue to the next slide, John. News. Yeah, brings, what? You need to put that on a t-shirt, man. What'd you say? News brings. What? <laughs> You'll have to watch the replay. <laughs> That's how I'm getting clicks, Jamal. Go, go. Okay, I, love, I love it. <laughs> Crude's down 5% on the week uh, due to Fed tightening bows. Tesla. Car prices at all times, though, it's never been cheaper to buy a Tesla. Model 3 costs 5000 less than the average new car these days. <laughs> Australia raised rate 25 basis points. Uh, Canada and Japan stayed still. Japan was the last time for their governor. They're bringing in a new person, so they might change things around. We'll see. And is it possible that this contagion in the banking se sector is the thing that causes the feds to pause rates? Wait, I mean, what do you think? Possible. I don't think so, but that's the argument that the street's making today, for sure. Wilder things happen. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> flight to quality case. Yeah. Finally, research. OJ, the mathematical case for trading futures. Take a look at that. That's all I got, boys. Awesome, Jamal. I'm going to cut you a little bit short so we catch the opening bell, but that was a great piece. I'm sorry we didn't have a little bit more time to it. Next week, I'll keep Tom a little quiet. We'll be back in 90 seconds. We got the opening bell next. Tom had to tell us about his paella all day.